So in some of my past videos, I've set up software that probably should have had authentication, but didn't. And I don't blame the developers for this. Authentication is hard, and for a lot of web apps, it's not something that the developer wants to take on on their own. So today, I'm going to add authentication to some of these services with Authelia. Specifically, in this example, Frigate. So Authelia is going to give us username and password and two-factor authentication to all of our home lab services. If that sounds interesting to you, then come along on this adventure. So here's what we got now. We've got Frigate. We've got our user. So when our user makes a connection to Frigate, what security do we have going on here? Currently, Frigate just subscribes to the use a non-standard port practice. They're exposing HTTP port 5000, and I guess they're just hoping that no one connects to port 5000, or they're expecting you to do security on your own. So I have done a little bit better than that already with my existing tutorial. So I added Caddy on front. So Caddy connects to the random port 5000, and it lets our user connect to the well-known port 443, with a self-signed TLS cert, but that still doesn't really give us any authentication of the user, and because it's self-signed, it doesn't even really give us authentication of Caddy. Now we can fix the self-signed bit by using Let's Encrypt, and that's really easy with Caddy, but I don't want to just expose my whole security system to the internet with no user authentication. So today I'm going to set up Authelia to authenticate users, and then I can expose Caddy to the internet to do Let's Encrypt, and that'll fix both sides of the problem. So I'm going to move Caddy over here a little bit, just to give me some space in the diagram. So I'm bringing in Ophelia, and Ophelia is going to authenticate users here before it lets Caddy make the connection back here. So essentially, when a user connection comes in, it takes a little bit of a detour, Caddy makes a connection to Ophelia, and Ophelia either says, or rejects it. Whatever the response from Ophelia is, this comes back to Caddy, and then Caddy will either terminate the upstream connection, or allow it to continue on. And it does this with every single request that comes in. It sends a little branch over here to Athelia. Athelia decides if the user is allowed or not, kicks them back. So by doing this auth at Caddy, the proxy, we don't have to worry about changing any settings on our backend app. Our app runs exactly as it did. And this means it's compatible with a wide variety of home lab services that we're already running. Most of which don't have authentication or don't have good authentication, or we can turn off authentication and rely on Caddy and Athelia to give us the security we want. So as for actually installing Athelia, I'm going to install it on an LXC container on Proxmox. This is nice and easy to manage with the Proxmox environment. I can move it around, etc. Uh, it gets a first class IP address, unlike Docker. And so it'll be auth.applr.net. And I'm going to use Debian 12 because that's the latest version of Debian. And it seems like a good choice. So let's hop in. Of course, all of this information will be on my blog. So I'm going to start with Debian 12 and just do an upgrade. I also went and put the IP address of the server in global DNS now, so it can look itself up. We can get Let's Encrypt certs, all that good stuff. And I've allowed port 80 and 443 through the firewall, again, to this IPv6 address. So again, Let's Encrypt works. So now this is the basic install process. So we need these three things to add the signing key. So we're going to download the signing key from Athelia. We're going to add the dev repo from Athelia. Then we're going to install Athelia from their own dev repo. And this will ensure we have it up to date and that normal apt update and apt upgrade will also keep Athelia up to date. Just paste that guy in there and let it run. So since I firmly believe all services should run from their proper assigned port, I wanted to run Athelia on 443 instead of 9091 and it didn't want to. Their uh, systemd service file is pretty well hardened, which is a good thing normally except I couldn't get it to add the uh, service net binding capability. So I just added an IP tables rule to forward for 443 to port 9091. I wrote a systemd service and uh, yeah, starting and stopping the service just starts and stops that port forward, so it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna copy this in here. We also have to actually install IP tables. Paste that in, and then we can install IP tables, reload, and enable. So if we list, we see we have redirect to 1991, and you do the same for IP6 tables. There's also one for v6 as well. So next up, we need a configuration.yaml. Um, they have an example that is how long. 
So I made a diff here of what I changed. So in short, I set dark mode, I configured the server, um, I set up TLS to use the path that CertBot will use. So a little bit later in the video, I'm gonna install CertBot. It's gonna generate these certs, but we'll get to that. So obviously you need to put in your own domain name here, but we got the private key and the full chain. Um, I've enabled the off Z endpoint for forward off. That's what we use for caddy. So I set my own issuer. This is in the uh, TOTP section, I believe. We need to generate some secrets. And I just used a password generator to generate a password that was long. Uh, I've chosen a path for the user database file. We'll get to that in a bit. I have an example rule here that just allows everything with one factor. We'll again get to that in a bit. And let's see what else is important. We need a really long key here, so you're going to want to find something um, using SQLite database instead of MySQL or Postgres because it's easy. And SMTP. So you need a mail provider so that you can send mail. So Athelia will send you mail or your user's mail when they either need to reset their password or they need a one-time key to add a TOTP or WebAuth key. So if you don't have two-factor set up, you need to get an email key and you use that to verify that you're authorized to set up two-factor. So you're going to need email. There's another option is to use a file and then it just writes all the emails it would write to a file and then you look at the file and you're like, oh look, I got a code. And that's a huge pain in the ass to use. So you're gonna to wanna to set up email now, I'm not your email provider, so I can't help you set up with your email provider, but it probably involves asking them what their SMTP ingress server is and getting some sort of app password. So I did that. This is not my actual password, but I have a password. And yeah, so we're gonna take this whole thing here, this diff, and we're gonna copy it. And we're gonna make a file called diff.patch. I'm going to paste it in. So if you need to edit anything, now would be the time to do so. So once we have this diff file, we're just going to use patch to apply it. So we need to install patch. Then we just say patch, and we'll give the path Etsy, Athelia, configuration.yaml, and diff.patch. We're going to pipe it, diff.patch, and patching file. It's done. Of course, you're welcome to use whatever techniques you want to edit this config file in the future. In particular, there's a section where we set up rules. And I just have one rule set up right now that's to just anything on that's a subdomain of applar.net gets one factor. And we're going to edit that later in the video, but you're going to be coming back to this config.yaml and making tweaks. But first, this video is brought to you by FlexiSpot and their C7 ergonomic desk chair. This guy's been here at my desk for about two months now, so I've gotten to enjoy the comfort of it while I do video editing. Tilt is stiff enough to be supportive, but still easy to recline without adjustment. It's pretty easy to adjust the lumbar support. You can adjust the armrest up and down independently of the seat. You can also turn it side to side and forward backward. So I can tuck under my desk nicely. You can also move the headrest up and down, in and out. Lay back, watching my videos. Probably don't see it too much in my videos because I usually stand at my standing desk when I'm recording, but it's usually just out of view over here because this is the setup I use for both recording and editing and pretty much all my work these days. So when I'm done talking to you guys here, Lower the desk, roll up my chair, and now it's time to get to video editing. So I start by doing my ingest process, transcoding all my proxies if I'm going to do that. Now we can work on some editing. You can see I'm working on Kevin's video right now. Maybe you'll see a video on Kevin someday. It's a pretty cool little thing up there. So I use multicam pretty heavily, so I'm just kind of switching back and forth. And then I'm done. It's time to render. 
course. We also can't forget the most important one in the editing room, the supervisor, also known as the lead producer, sitting next to my pile of future videos. Use my code C730 for $30 off at the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So next up we need a user database, so let's make that guy. I just have two users here, so I have Appelard with the password of Correct Horse Battery Staple and Karen with the password of Karen. So we'll just copy this in. Now since I'm using file auth instead of LDAP auth, you have to create all of your users in this file. And you either have to tell it to watch this file or you have to restart a failure when you edit it. So it will edit this file anytime someone changes their password but the user has to initially exist in the file, and that's up to you. Also, emails are optional, but if the user doesn't have an email, then they can't set up one-time passwords or uh, two-factor, and they can't reset their passwords, so that would kind of suck, wouldn't it? If you want to generate your own password too, you can run this command. I'll just show you what it looks like. So we just run that command. So it basically just says to generate an argon2 password. So. Yeah, so it looks like that, and you can just copy and paste it into your YAML. So next up, we need a TLS certificate. I mentioned before I was going to install CertBot, so now we're going to install CertBot and set it up. So I'm just going to install CertBot separately so I can walk through this command. So let's go ahead and install CertBot. So next up, we've got this command here, and this does the initial configuration. So we say we're going to generate a cert only, so we're not integrating with a web server. We're going to run standalone, so CertBot is going to do the HTTP challenge on port 80 on its own. Our domain name is authadapler.net, and I have a deploy hook here. So every time it wants to deploy a cert, it calls this function, which in this case is user bin system control restart Athalia. So Athalia loads its certs when it starts up, so we have to restart it if we get new certs. And that's what deploy hook does. And because I test this all day, I'm going to add staging. If you do testing of things all day, you'll eventually run into rate limits from Let's Encrypt. Staging won't do that. Staging is also not a publicly trusted cert, but it is a cert, and it goes through the whole process. So you would not do staging. I am doing staging because I've done this like 15 times today. So now it's going to ask me for my email address. And we can say yes, and no news from EFF. So you can run as many times as you want, it says it's not due for renewal. Um, so we have a cert, we're good. And finally, we can start Athelia. So I got a sign in page, so let's see if we can log in as Karen. Oh look, I'm authenticated, but I can't go anywhere because there's nothing to go to. So next, let's set up the caddy reverse proxy for Frigate so that it authenticates using Athelia. It's so coming back to our diagram here. So we got this guy set up, and I set this up in a previous video, so now we gotta set this guy up here. So here is the caddy file we have now. So we have an address, we're reverse proxying, and we're using a self-signed cert. I previously used a self-signed cert because I didn't want to expose this to the internet because it had no authentication. So now that we're adding Athelia, I'm gonna use TLS with an email. So I get a Let's Encrypt cert, and Athelia deals with the authentication. So I have an example caddy file here we're going to start with. So here's what I got. So in the global section we set an email. We always need an email when we use Let's Encrypt because that gets sent to them. And then next up I have a forward auth directive which tells it that every time it gets a request here to authenticate it against this, which is Athalia. So I'm doing HTTPS to Athalia and we're going to the forward auth endpoint. And then here I have uh, skip verify because I'm using the staging cert, but you could remove this entire transport HTTP directive if you're not using the staging cert. And then down here we reverse proxy to forget. So pretty simple. So I went to Corona and it redirected me here, which is the redirect page. So we'll log in, hit sign in, and we can forget. That was really easy. So next up, I've got some fancy stuff going on. What if we want to restrict so that only admin users can access certain paths on our application and everyone else can access the whole application? Or what if we want to say this particular site needs two-factor, this one only needs one-factor, etc. 
This is where we write the rules for Athelia. So I got a simple rule section here. This is just for frigate. So I'm saying if you access Corona, you need two factor if you're part of the group admins and you're trying to access a path that starts with config. So that is an admin trying to do admin things. Next up, we have anyone else trying to do admin things. So if you don't fall into this group admins and you try to access config, you get a deny. And the third, we have anything that doesn't fall into that group. So if you're trying to access this, then you're not caught by one of these two resources above, then you get the one factor policy. So let's look at where this goes. So we're going to the Othelia config file and we're going like way, way down. So if you followed my example, you'll be all the way down here at line 625. So I have a rule that just says everything gets through. So we're going to uh, replace that rule with the rules from this other example. Paste that, we need to make sure we don't have two copies of rules. So this should be good. So we have these three rules. So we'll save that and we'll restart Athalia. We are at Frigate. What if we go to config? Initially it loads. What if I reload though? So now I need to set up a one-time password. So I need to set up TFA, so let's do this. So I can either use WebAuth or I can use TOTP and both of these work pretty well. So let's see what TOTP looks like. Zoom in a little bit for you guys. Okay, so it sent me an email. Let's check my email. There we go, so that's the code I got in my email. Yay! So now it gives me a QR code. I'll set it up on my phone here. So it's on my phone, just trust me. So now we confirm. I got a code 160180. And we're good. So now I have a one time password. So let's go back and try to go to. Uh, there we go. So now I try to go back to config. Tells me I need a one time password. 468626. There we go. We can get So now we got. Frigat authenticated by Athelia using TOTP just for the config section. Pretty handy. So where does that leave us with Athelia? Well, I've dealt with proxy auth now. In addition, when you use proxy auth, you get some headers passed to the back application, such as the user and the user's email. So if the back application actually does care about user accounts, you can get that information from Athelia. Now, Athelia also supports OIDC, OpenID Connect. There are arguably some better solutions for OIDC. But um, yeah, now a lot of the applications that I talk about on my channel are really quite simple solutions. I do like these simple solutions. They don't necessarily need to know about different users. They don't really need any concept of permissions. So using Othalia just to give people access to these apps makes a lot of sense to me. Othalia is a simple application. A lot of these backend apps are also simple applications. They go well together. That doesn't mean this is the way you should design a proper big solution, but for a home lab case, I think it's perfect. Now, if you are concerned about high availability with Athelia, the app itself is stateless. So if all of the backend services that it depends on are distributed, then you can have a high availability Athelia setup. So this means that the session store, which by default is in memory, that would be moved to Redis. They don't need a Redis cluster. Um, the user accounts, currently they are YAML. They would need to get moved to LDAP. So you have a database that's not part of Othelia doing that. And it also needs a um, database for the tokens. And by default, I'm using uh, SQLite for that. So I would need to move to Postgres probably. So if all of those things were done, then you could have mul multiple copies of Othelia running. They'd all be equivalent. You can point your proxies at all of them. Be nice. Now as for other home lab authentication solutions, I am really curious how many of you are actually running some sort of centralized single sign-on system in their home lab that's more complex than Athelia. So especially if you're running Windows Active Directory, that sounds like a nightmare to administer. But I'm not a Windows admin, so maybe it's not. Um, there are some Active Directory-like solutions. So there's Samba Active Directory, which is a very much an AD clone. Then there's um, Free IPA from Red Hat, or Red Hat IPA, and uh, MIT Kerberos, if you want to run that. Um, all of which are technically very good solutions that scale up to really high levels, 
but I just don't see a need for those kinds of things in the home lab. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys will comment in the comments. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring the video. Link for the chair down in the description below. That's the C7 ergonomic desk chair. If you want to message me more on Discord, I have a link to my Discord down below as well. Hope to see you guys there. We can talk about authentication and IPv6 and all the good things of Home Lab. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the instructions too. Those guys are down. Link to my blog post for those too. And I'll see you guys on the next adventure.